Hello and welcome back. Uh, today I'm not going to be doing a normal devlog like usual because honestly uh, this past week has been sort of crazy with finals and all that. And so uh, yeah, today I'm going to just be showing you how to add the pets menu as well as the entirety of the functionality as well as having a code download in the description below. And so to get started, uh, I'm going to start off by just demonstrating. So right here we have our normal menu right um now statistics and floors are just two things that i don't exactly have working as of right now as you can see in the last devlog uh now here i have a custom a custom pet uh this is just a ferret um so basically i just named her sugar now right here right uh here is a slime now if i were to uh click on it right then the slime pet is equipped, and he just follows the player. Now, because of his huge hitbox, he does tend to push around the player, so typically I don't exactly like having him around. So if you click on the equipped pet again, then it basically just despawns pets entirely. Now, if you want to add a pet, then you do slash pet, and then you do add, and then the name of the pet. So let's say I wanted to have the sheep pet. And then the name of the player that you want to give it to. So currently, then we have slime, sugar, and pig. And so basically, this is stored in a list variable, which I will be talking to you in a moment. Now, right here, then if I go into pets, pig is equipped. And so if I select the pig, then the pig goes from the location it was previously at as a slime. And it spawns in, and there is the pig. Now, if I want to despawn it, once again, do that. You can switch between. It doesn't matter. And then right here, we have a missing one, which in the end becomes a sheep. And so if we add that, then right here we have pets and we have the sheep pet. And we can toggle that in and out. And now to get started with the actual creation of this, even though it looks sort of simple, it's really quite complex. Now before we actually get into the code behind this, I'm just going to tell you right now, it's pretty complicated now i'm going to have a uh, simple link in the description that you can just download the script directly from because as you know this is technically open source well not exactly but basically i want this to be for everyone once i've created it and so by sharing the code you guys can also use this in your own projects uh, at your home especially right now in quarantine where you're really not going too many places so in order to get started you first off take your face away from Minecraft and then you bring yourself over here to Minehut. Now, in the Minehut panel, yes, I'm using a server host, don't judge me. Um, basically, you go over to your plugins. Now, if you don't have Minehut and you have any other server hosting or you're even doing it on your own computer, first off, you want to make sure that you have the right installation, okay? And then, second off, you want to make sure that you have these three plugins. Yes, three plugins for this creation. Now, we have the Citizens plugin, which you can find here at this link. Then you have the Citizens Command plugin, which basically allows you to execute commands by doing NPCs. Although, this also allows you to control NPCs, which is the main key feature of this. Now, plugin link here, right there. Okay, and then the last one, of course, is script, because without script, this entire project would be nothing. And so script has been featured in every one of my videos so far, and it will continue be what to be for the rest of the devlogs. Now, if we go into our file manager, and then we just let this load real quick. Yeah, mine ha has been having some issues lately regarding the... Uh, productivity of the servers so if we go in here and we go into our plugins area okay and then we go into script don't mess with citizens or citizen CMD this will only mess up your stuff do not change their configs now don't change the config in here don't mess with anything just go into your scripts now as you can see I have quite a lot of stuff ranging from just simple admin commands all the way down to quests for toolsmiths and NPCs. However, we want to focus on these three right here, our menu SK, pet NPC SK, and then pets.sk. 
Now to get started, we want to have our menu. Now technically, well actually, technically you do not even need this. You can technically have it as a singular command and it will all work completely fine. Now if you want to make it simpler, then you can just uh, look at the video and copy all this code. I will just scroll through it right here. Um, however, I'm not going to be featuring this because you can just run it as a simple command. So if we hit exit, and then we go over to these two files, we want to start at pets. Now, pets will have the command that basically runs our, uh, which basically runs our, um, our window in GUI. Now, right here, we have the pets menu. So command pets, pets dash menu. It will basically open a menu with six rows going down it. And then it will format slots 0, because 0 is the first index in script, all the way to 54, with ranging intervals, with basically 8 in between each, with a glass pane named nothing, because I just thought it was a pretty cool outline. Now, right after here, we can see that there is a if statement right here that's saying if player.pets contains slime. Now, you may be wondering what this means, and it's actually pretty simple. So, right here, as you can see, we have a list of variable, and the list variable is defined with the um, with the two semicolon. Oh, sorry, no, the two colons with a asterisk right next to it. Now, you may be wondering what exactly this is supposed to mean. And now, if we go up right here and see the variables section of our code, then we can see that variables right here has player.pets equals slime. Now, slime is the default pet in this case. And so, basically, if we have our uh, slime right here, then that basically means that we can access the slime. And I'll show you how to program this later. However, right here, we are basically just uh, using some formatting, so that way we can say that the player, so the player in the server, so basically these percents mean format, and so basically player is a keyword, and so if you have the player inside of a formatting uh, line, I guess, and then dot pets in a list, then basically you are accessing that specific player's pets variable, and that is of course a list. And so, if we go back to this, then as you can see, we have if player.pets contains slime. And so, if this is the player's pet list, then it is just checking for if slime is in their pet inventory. And by default, it is. And so, format GUI slot 10 of player with school, uh, Kobijo, parse has an offline player named slime to run. Now, the uh, A. Well, sorry, the and a and l slime is just basically saying, oh yeah, I want this to be green and I want it to be bold. Okay, and then right here, format slot 10. So slot 10 is just the second one, well, the set, oh my gosh, the second slot on the second row. And so if you do of player with skull, then Kobijo is a player. Now this player has actually dedicated their skin well, sorry, their account to having a specific skin. And you actually have a website uh, online, which is just Minecraft Heads, that basically has a catalog of players that will never change their skin, and thus will always have the skin available to the public. So you have to have their name in a string, so in quotations, parsed as an offline player. And then, of course, it's just named this. And now, right here, to run is just if the player.pet.equip is not slime then set player.pet.equip to slime. And so you may be wondering, <laughs> what, what does this mean? So player.pet.equip is just the equipped pet. And so if it's not slime, right, and you want to equip the slime, then it basically just says, oh yeah, so the player wants to equip the slime pet, and then it just sets the equipped pet to slime. And then if it is the slime pet, then it says, basically, the player's pet is now equipped to none, which is the despawning mechanic. And then pet spawn right here is another command, which I will get into shortly. Now, format GY, slot to player with glass pane named C. Now, this C right here is just the formatting code for red, and then there are the question marks. Now, the else right here is basically saying if it 
does not contain slime, so if the player does not have the slime pet active, then basically it will format it as a red glass pane with red question marks, basically saying that they have not unlocked it currently. Now basically we repeat this with the pig, with slot 11, sheep with slot 12, and if you want to have a custom one, I recommend putting them at the end, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, then you can do sugar, for instance, for the ferret. And you can also do really any other pet, as long as you have the name. You can even have just custom tabs inside of the pets menu. It doesn't really matter. And that's just about it for this file. Uh, this file is really repetitive, and that's why it doesn't take too long to explain. However, I can understand how some parts are a bit confusing. Now, if you're wondering right here what the whole text, text, player thing, these are just arguments, and I've covered those in a separate video. Now, if you want any more help, then you can just click the link down below, and you can access our Discord server. That will just about allow you to ask for help in any way, shape, or form with script. So, if we just want to exit that, then we have that explained. Now, next, once again, we're not going back to menu, we are going back to pet. NPC. And now in pet NPC we have quite a few different things. Now to get started we have the pet spawn command that we saw uh, earlier in the code. Um, now this pet spawn command is used anywhere. It does not matter where you use this. And pet spawn, really pet spawn doesn't have any arguments. Uh, it's actually really simple. Uh, if the player's equipped pet is none, then it basically just despawns the player's uh, active pet. And basically right here, it has the uh, player's pet inside of a, well, inside of a um, little mark right here. And basically that mark is also on the other side, which, I, which you can see right here with this little sliver. And basically they need to be inside of the marks so that way they can then be uh, put as a variable in a string and so if the pet equip is none then it despawns player's pet and player's pet is just a thing that the plugin uses to make sure that it is actually the right pet now if you just have player then what will happen is if you try to run this it will immediately uh, de-op you so first off if you try to do this it will first off op you so this will op you and then at the very end it will de-op the player now if you have a separate name obviously then it's not going to be notepy you want to change notepy right here to any other player username including yours and so basically if player is not notepy or your username then de-op the player and so basically currently as it is if if you are directly going into the description of the video to try to download this, you will need to change the notepad right here to your own Minecraft username. Now, getting back to the rest of the code, uh, right here we have if player.pet.equip is none, then once again it despawns the player's pet. Now, else if, so basically if this is not uh, none, then basically, if it is not none, then else if the player.pet.equip is slime, so if the equipped pet is the slime pet, then execute console command npc spawn player's pet, and then it will make the type of npc a slime. Now, this is very dependent on the plugin, and because of the citizen's plugin having very specific types, you want to have it lowercase. And some mobs, I am not entirely sure how I will get to be working. However, currently we have the slime right here, we have the pig right here, and we have the sheep that is right here. And all of these are lowercase names, and they do not matter how long the characters are. So once again, we just repeat this with the pig and the sheep until, once again, it just deops the player. So once again, if you just change your name from NodePy right here, to your Minecraft username, then you will not be de-opt from the server. Now on join, the okay. So basically on join, so once the player joins the server, it executes a command that basically opts the player. Now 
it will create the player's pet so npc create player's pet it will then execute the command for selecting the pet and then it will also make the npc automatically follow the player now if the player is not me so you want to once again change in NodePy to your minecraft username then you want to do execute console command dop player so once again it will automatically dop you if your name is not the name given right here make player execute command slash pet spawn and so if you are uh if you are uh me then wait sorry no <laughs> pet spawn is a default command so basically if you are me then you will not have your thing deopt. However, by default, it will make the player uh, spawn the pet. And if it's none, then of course nothing will spawn. Now, of course, this. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, sorry for that. But um, so once again, this does not need operator permissions to run. Now, then on quit. So on quit, if you leave the server. So on quit, basically, if the player leaves the server. It will execute the console command to opt the player. It will then remove the player's pet from every NPC. Okay, so it will delete the pet from the database. Okay, then if the player is not me, which once again, for the third time, do not use NodePy here. Make sure it's your own Minecraft username. If the player is not you, then it will deop the player automatically upon leaving the server and uh yeah that's basically it for the pet system so we have it to where we have a command that will automatically spawn the pet and we will also have a command that will then summon pets via a gui i just realized that in fact we do have another plugin so if you did not wait until the end of this video then you would not have known this but right here in the plugin section, I actually have a very important plugin that I need to show you. And this is actually responsible for the, well, this is responsible for the entirety of the GUI. So instead of just having script, it's not skperm, skb, skquery is in fact tusk. And the sk in tusk is capitalized. And so this is very, very important. This allows you to do some extra features, which... While I'm not entirely sure about what the extra features in fact are, I know that one of the features is in fact the GUI. And so having the GUI is very, very important in this project. And so I've been using it a ton and it is needed for this, uh, well, for this creation. So just to make sure, make sure that you have Tusk, the script plugin, Citizens and Citizens CMD installed to make sure that this will work. If you do not have all those plugins, this tutorial will not be helpful for you and will not be helpful to the players that will be on your server. And, and that is it for this plugin tutorial. If you like what you see, then comment down below and share it with people. I really like to see people uh, growing in this community. And while there aren't too many people who experiment with script or, or the redstone mechanics or really many of the technical aspects, you can do a lot of really fun things with this. And so if you like what you see, then like and subscribe, comment down below, and join our Discord. We are very open to people, and while we try to keep moderation semi-strict, we still want to have a very good server that's open to just about anybody. And so yeah, if you like what you see, once again, like, comment, subscribe, share, and all of that. And thank you for watching. Bye.